Hi, my name is Ben Beat and I'm an artist. Earlier this year, 2013, I did a project with Kimberley Air Tours where they took me on a flight over the Bungle Bungle Ranges, which are located at Pernalulu National Park. You're looking at the artwork that has come out of that project. In this short film, I'm going to tell you a bit about the artwork, a bit about the ecology, geology, and deep time history of the region and how this information has informed the artwork itself. Our flight started at Kununurra. From there we flew over Lake Argyle, which is the largest artificial lake by volume in Australia, and made our way to Punalulu National Park. Firstly I will explain some of the details within the artwork, and then I will show you some footage of the flight as we proceeded from Kununurra to the Bungle Bungles. In this detail you can see that I've used a satellite image and sketched out our path of flight with artistic license. In this detail you can see on the far right hand side there is a map of Australia which marks out the fossil sites of the thylacine. By looking at this map I noted that fossil remains of the thylacine were found in the Kimberley region. Therefore it is possible that once upon a time the Tasmanian tiger lived around the Bungle Bungles. It wasn't until the 1980s that White Australia became aware of the Bungle Bungles. I included this map to point out that it's possible that indigenous Australians as they migrated into Australia beheld the Bungle Bungles long before they beheld the southeast coast of Australia or indeed Tasmania. In these diagrams which I include within the artwork we can see what the region would have looked like firstly 370 to 360 million years ago and then following that 250 to 265 million years ago and of course the present day. The sandstone that makes up the beehive formations was laid down by ancient riverbeds forming the sedimentary layering in the sandstone. These layers are evident as either grey or orange bands, each with different physical properties. Dark grey bands indicate the presence of cyanobacteria that grows on sandstone layers with higher clay levels and an ability to hold moisture conditions that are conducive to the growth of the bacteria. The orange bands are evidence of sandstone with low clay content and higher porosity. This results in the sandstone drying out quicker, a property which doesn't enable the cyanobacteria to grow in these bands. Without the bacteria the sandstone surface is left bare and becomes oxidized to form a rusty orange color. So the question to ask yourself with every band is is this rust or is this cyanobacteria? The Bungle Bungle range we know today is the remains of a large sedimentary rock mass laid down about 360 million years ago which places it within the Devonian period Therefore I took a map of the world during the Devonian times and placed it in the centre of the artwork as you can see here. Here is the same map but in this one we can see the outline of the continents which will make it clearer to you where Australia is located. It's a contentious debate as to when Australia began rifting from Antarctica. Some put it as far back as 160 million years ago others as recently as 60 million years ago. But it should be noted that when we reflect on the age of the sediments that make up the Bungle Bungles, Australia separating from Antarctica and drifting north is a very recent event. Having taken you now through a number of the considerations which make up the artwork's details, I will take you on a journey that Kimberley Air Tours took me on from Kununurra across the Bungle Bungles. On the first leg of our trip we left Kununurra 
and followed the Ord River along until we reached Lake Argyle. Lake Argyle, with its surrounding mud flats and grasslands, has been identified by BirdLife International as an important bird area. That's IBA, because it supports uh, about 150,000 water birds. The primary inflow is the Ord River, whilst the Bow River and many other small creeks also flow into the dam. The stills and the footage that you can see here is of the spectacular scenery that we saw as we approached Lake Argyle. Lake Argyle is recognised as a Ramsar protected wetland. It was absolutely incredible viewing such a large body of water from a plain at such a height. Between Lake Argyle and the Bungle Bungles, we saw a sequence of patterned ridges and valleys that had been eroding away for many, many millions of years. In this diagram, it explains some of the formations that we saw. I can now identify a perched syncline, an anticlinal valley, an inverse relief, to name a few. The Bungle Bungle Range is best known for its striped beehive shaped domes. It's one of the most fascinating geological landmarks in Western Australia, and from an aircraft it's an incredibly imposing sight. The orange and black strips across the beehive like mounds, encased in a skin of silica and algae, are clearly visible as you approach it from the south. As you sweep further, over the range, a hidden world of gorges and pools is revealed, with fan palms clinging precariously to walls and crevices in the rocks. Although the Bungle Bungle range was extensively used by Aboriginal people during the wet season, when plant and animal life was abundant, few Europeans knew about its existence until the mid-1980s. The area has been a national park since 1987, and its unique appearance has captured the public imagination. You can see here stills and footage that I took of the Bungle Bungles during our flight with Kimberley Air Tours. Just as spectacular as the Bungle Bungles themselves was Echidna Chasm, Mini Palms Gorge and Piccaninny Gorge, which is to the north of what is now the Bungle Bungle Range. Uplift occurred along the Osmond Fault to create the Osmond Range and to the west took place along the Holes Creek Fault. Streams and rivers eroded these ancient highlands and at their edges slopes were steep and the energy in the streams and rivers was high, allowing them to carry large boulders and dump them at the foot of the scarp. Such boulder conglomerates can today be seen in the walls of Echidna Chasm. And so after experiencing these amazing gorges and chasm, we made our way back to Kununurra. The scenery on the return journey was just as spectacular.
So in all, it was an absolutely incredible experience and something I'll never forget and very inspiring in uh, creating the artwork that you can see before you now. I hope you enjoy the work and you could view it on my website uh, artastralis.com or benbeaton.com.au in the artist residency section of these websites. Thanks for watching and a special thank you to Kimberley Air Tours for without their support this artwork would not exist.